bel applauso. Uh, please help me welcome the screenwriter, producer, and director of Trap and Night Shamala and his leading man, Josh Hartnett. It, it is, we're both, we've been traveling for so long and to be here in, in Rome is our last stop. We're feeling, you, you can kind of feel a little joy and we're finishing, it's very exciting and the movie's opening around the world today. So we're so happy to show you the movie. Thank you for having us. So uh, when it comes to writing a new script, how was like the creative process? How do you start? Where do you start? I mean, traditionally, um, I kind of get an idea and then, I, and then if it's if it's strong enough, I'll write it in a notebook. But that's like a serious moment of commitment where I write it, where I pick a notebook and I and I write it. It's not a small thing. Okay. And in fact, many of my notebooks are from Rome, by the way. You guys don't know this. I would say 80% of my notebooks are wrong. I had, I had 10 minutes today, so I went and shopped and found some more notebooks today. How many, how many did you bring? I bought, what, like eight, I think I bought eight. So, so mo almost eight all my films come here. <laughs> <laughs> I ran out, so I was like, oh my God, I gotta, I gotta get more notebooks from Rome. What brand is it? That, no, we, that, we can, no, I don't know if we can, can say support that. Brand. I didn't say, I didn't say, I didn't say anything. Notebook. But I can ask you, where do you store those? You know, they go into kind of an archive room once the movie's done, but in, in, when they're just ideas, they kind of live on a shelf and then I, I'll go back to it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, this movie was a little bit different because it came from a conversation with my, my daughter, who's a musician, about can we fuse music and a thriller together in a, in a way that's kind of you know atypical, um, where if you write an entire album to a narrative where the characters are watching it and it's bespoke and it's really speaking to the story and becomes part of the story which in our mind was kind of hadn't been done since Purple Rain. And so it was a mixture of like different genres being put together. Um, and so it was a very unusual process. So I, it was that, can I think of a story where characters would watch music? That was literally how it started. And then, then I kind of sat with it for a few months and then I was like, oh, Sleek, I have this idea of a, of a character being trapped. And, and then we, we built it from there. And can we start talking about this character? Um, yeah, uh, what was uh, the things that you find really interesting in him? And how did you first this world, you know? Well, it's not often that somebody comes to you and says that they want you to play a serial killer who's also a really good father and like a member of the community, <laughs> and you have to figure out a way to make that psychologically sound and then also like hilarious. And but so. We didn't tell there is a serial killer. They didn't know. That. <laughs> That's you didn't know it was a serial killer? Did you know that? He's a serial. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, when when it, when it, when this basically after Knight and I spoke for the first time, and he sent me the script. Uh, I recognized like what a challenge it was going to be, but honestly, there was nobody in the world I would rather have done it with because I, well, it came from him, but also like he's the most supportive and wonderful director of actors. Uh, going back to. One of my favorites of his is Signs. I don't know if you guys have seen Signs. I've seen it. But like the character drama in that is so beautiful and so well represented and so complete. It it, it, it holds the whole movie. And not many people would do that. They would take that. I'm not going to spoil the movie in case people haven't seen it. But the perspective that he takes on his movies is always different than you would anticipate and always more more revelatory in a way. I, I, I love that. Yeah. Anyway, I'm off subject. Thank you, bud. No, but how was working with Josh? How was working together, building the character together? I'll take this one. <laughs> he loved it. <laughs> you know, there's a certain type of way I, I make movies. It's um, kind of a, it's, it's a uh, you have to buy into the process of, of the way I'm making movies. And, and I, I have found that the really, you know, the, 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 the actors in the right place that are very, you know, uh, okay, to, they're the ones that are ready to take a big leap and jump. and you know, meeting Josh and seeing how wonderful he is and could, could convey to you the beautiful father of it all. But then the other side and the way we, we may make, make movies, I thought, you know, he's perfect for it because he was ready to, to jump. You have to meet the right person at the right time in their life. And he was ready to kind of take all this superstar and, and throw it away and be what it, whatever the character needed to be and just react. And that's a rare combination to have all the skill sets and then, and then throw them away if needed. And so he was kind of the perfect balance. I wanted to just mention one thing, if that's okay. Where, well, part of the process is that I, 
storyboard everything that the visuals are critical to the movies and I look for cinematographers that can really um, it, you know enjoy and embrace this kind of heavy preparation heavy thinking about it like old school the old ways when we weren't editing on computers and you made the movie on the stage and through light very naturally and beautifully and do these kind of hyper thrillers and so I just wanted to mention that because our cinematographer is here today could you stand up say up say the best. Such an amazing, amazing uh, artist. Um, he, he did a movie, uh, Call Me By Your Name, and that's how I got to see his, to see his cinematography and so many, so many amazing movies. He makes a lot of uh, movies in Italy here, so you guys must know him really well. Um, so thank you. I just wanted to say, can you introduce you? His address is <laughs> staying in the hotel room 422. But. Um, Josh, can you tell us a little bit how did you bring to life to Cooper? Because I think it's really uh, far away from your personality. I hope so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I yeah. I mean, it, it involved a lot of reading because let's let's put it this way: if you were playing a cinematographer, you could go, you could meet Sayo, and he could tell you all about the work that he does, and you could say, "Oh, okay, I get it. I'm going to put a light over there. I'm going to understand life from this perspective because you had this experience when you were young or whatever." But as a um, as someone playing a serial killer, you don't get that opportunity. You can't go can, can and meet a serial killer. <laughs> you don't. I mean, like, I might have met a serial killer in my life, but I didn't know about it. So um, so I haven't been able to really kind of vet anyone, and, or what do you call it? I haven't been able to explore their brain. So just a lot of reading, honestly. A lot of reading. Reading. We read a lot of the same books and then came back and talked about them afterward. Um, and uh, then once we got to that point, I already knew the tone that I wanted, and there were lots of things in those books that sort of highlighted the fact that this character could be really bold and really entertaining and really charming. And um, I thought that those were excellent tools for this movie. It would be it would be more fun for the audience if this character is actually someone that you want to go on a ride with. Um, so it's okay if you like him. It doesn't mean you're a psychopath. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. And your daughter, Salika, uh, actually wrote me the 13th song. I was like, you have such a talented family, <laughs> you know? I was like working together to bring you this story and to the songs and to life. Um, you know, I get asked a lot, you know, how is it to work with your daughter? And it wasn't, it actually strangely wasn't as much working with my daughter as, you know, an artist that I, you know, I think incredibly highly of, that a world-class talent in music. She's been, you know, she was classically trained pianist from four years old and her whole life. It was her birthday yesterday. She was singing on the in Madrid on her last night. She flew home today, but it was this kind of opportunity to 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 learn from her about her mastery of her craft and aim it at a kind of a joint a joint thing. So it was it was strange. We didn't have any issues of any kind. We kind of aimed at the, her character's name is Lady Raven, and so we just kind of constantly talked about who she was and, and how it's different from Salika. That's nice. And a last question for both of you. Would you like to say something to the audience today, to the fans here in Italy? Um, enjoy the film. I hope you guys have a lot of fun because I think this movie is a ton of fun. I'm very proud of it. And I'm just, because it's their last time to really introduce the film, I just want to say thank you so much for having me on this journey. And, uh, and I hope you guys enjoy what this guy made. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. It's very emotional to, to present it. You're kind of the last ones we're presenting it to. So, thank you so much. We're very, very grateful.